Way. Way. Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Welcome back. It's going to be episode three of recording roof tanks with your cell phone. Uh, before we get going, if you guys are just now joining in, highly recommend check back through the playlist, watch episode one and two, because we're slowly building towards editing videos. And you know, if you miss something along the way, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna fall short. So, uh, in this video, we're really gonna cover the best shots, I believe. Uh, we'll give you the best quality videos, and we're gonna cover some features I use that are stock features on the cell phone that really, uh, you know, that may be overlooked. Some people may know about them. Especially iPhone users, this is really a video for you. Android users, sorry. You know, hopefully these features are on your phone, but uh, it's really the difference in, you know, getting good shots and great shots. So uh, before we get going, we're going to go ahead and cover the shout outs. So this week's winner is going to be Patrick's Diving Reef. I've actually been subscribed to him for a little while myself. And I can tell you for sure he documents the hobby as it should be the good, the bad, and the ugly. So definitely stop showing some love and let him know what you think about his channel. Now, before we jump into the features on the phone, there are two things I do before I start my videos. Very easily, phone, towel, clean your lens. I mean, I've, I can't tell you how many times I've finished editing a long video only to realize that I had a fingerprint or a smudge on my damn lens, you know, from my kids playing with my phone or for whatever reason. And just that's the difference between, you know, high quality videos and, and you know, fuzzy and out of focus shots. Because these phones, you know, they need as much help as you can give them. Clean the lens. Now, the second thing I use, white sheet of paper. And I, I know a lot of you professional guys, you know, you know how to do light, uh, white balancing. Uh, you know, you can use white or gray sheets. For my purposes, I don't use this all the time, but sometimes you know, the iPhone will, you know, the colors will be just off and you really can't explain why. Take a white sheet of paper, focus your phone on it, remove the paper. Sometimes that will uh, get your colors back where they should sometimes you'll get that purple or violet hue across your tank that really is you know i can't explain it but the paper does fix it so those are two things i do let's go ahead and jump into the features so first up is going to be the zoom feature just take your two fingers pinch them together to zoom in spread them apart to zoom out and you also have the bar available on the right which gives you a lot more control and that's kind of what i prefer to use next up it's going to be the touch focus now this feature is really really important especially with full tank shots you can really tell your phone where to autofocus and where to kind of adjust and get that clearer picture that you're looking for. Now, most importantly, we're gonna talk about the exposure feature. Now, this is kind of built into the touch focus. Once you have your phone focused where you want, if it's still too bright or something isn't looking right, you can definitely slide your finger up and down. It comes in handy. I'd say this is the number one feature in my opinion. It really helps you get past the issues with glare in your tank. All right, so as I mentioned, those are stock features on your phone, free, you know, they come with it, you don't have to pay for them. Why not take advantage of it, right? I mean, I've been making videos for the last, I would say, two and a half years, three years on my channel. Uh, I made about, I'm up to about 90 videos now, and I really start, you know, figuring things out around video 40. You know, hopefully you guys don't take that long. That's why I'm sharing everything I know now to try to make that transition, you know, that uh, learning curve a little easier for you. Now, um, as far as selecting the best tank, you know, shots for your tank, Really, every tank's different. Every tank has its own good side. Now, I'm gonna take you through some shots I use on my tank, and also share some shots that I don't feel, uh, you know, are good for anyone to use. Um, and then we'll go from there. I'm gonna take you guys through the process of getting a front shot of my tank. You know, first and foremost, my lights are already adjusted. So if you haven't done that yet, just go ahead and stop because this video is not gonna help you. Now, the second thing I do is make sure that my camera is on the same level as my tank. You know, I pretty much have them at the same height, basically eye level. And the same way I will look at my scape is the way you want to record it. Now, the second thing I do, you know, with this being an all-in-one, the whole tank can almost fit in the whole frame of my camera. So I always make sure that I try to eliminate any space on the sides of the tank and keep all the focus inside the tank. You know, you don't want to see any walls or wires or anything else I have going on. So those are the two steps that should help you along. So we got the camera in place. You know, what's next? We're going to get into touch focus. This is how you get past the glare in your tank or at least how I do with my iPhone. Basically, you know, what I've done first is touching the middle of the screen right at the finger leather. And this is kind of how it looks, which isn't bad, but the sand bed is still really bright and white. So I'm gonna give you guys a second way to try to get around that. Now that change you notice was me focusing the camera right below the frog spine, right on the sand bed. As you can see, the tenic lights really start to try to take over and overpower everything. That's where the exposure comes in. So with the phone focused on the sand bed, take the exposure, slowly walk it up. And what that does, you know, it gives you kind of the same look as before, but the sand bed is not as white. 
and it really gives you a full tank shot that uh, is something you can work with. So once again, touch focus, exposure, those things go hand in hand. We're gonna go through a few shots in the tank and then I'm gonna show you how it really affects everything, especially close ups and even far away angles. Give you guys a quick tip while the camera's moving. If you're gonna be recording videos, especially for editing purposes, use more than you need. And by that, record longer than you're gonna need. You know, if it's gonna be a 10 second clip you need, record 25 seconds worth. You know, if, if it's certain angles you want, record multiple times of those angles. The reason for it, but dealing with touch focus and dealing with the tenic lighting and cell phones, it's always gonna be certain parts of that footage is just ain't what you want. You know, it's just not where you need it to be. So as long as you have extra, you can always crop it down, edit it down, you know, and get just those perfect shots you want. I'm gonna take all of these shots we're doing right now for this tutorial. At the end of the video, we'll put together a quick five to 10 second uh, video and I'll show you exactly what I mean by using the best parts. And this should be fun. Now for close-up shots with the cell phone, you know, you're either gonna have to have your phone on the glass, which works great, or if you have a tripod like I'm using, have it as close as you can. You wanna avoid having to use the zoom feature because it really degrades the quality of your video, especially with HD and 4K and, you know, how the, all the high resolutions we're trying to use. But, you know, once you get it in place, use a touch focus. You can actually uh, focus on the zoanthids themselves or the sand bed to the right and use the auto exposure. Kind of run your finger up is the way I'm using on this shot. And it'll brighten it up a little bit for you and get those things to pop just like you need. Now, there will be situations, you know, due to your scape or your core placement or you know, just how big your tank is. I'm lucky I have a little tank. I can get away with it. But um, you're going to have to eventually zoom in to get those close-ups. Now, it's never going to be perfect. You know, this is not a $3,000 camera. It's just an iPhone, but I'll tell you, the resolution on this phone is pretty damn good. I'm not going to lie. It makes my life a lot easier. Now, of course, uh, none of this will work if you don't have your lighting adjusted. Right now, my Atenic lights are, I believe, at 25 right now. And my... Uh, whites are closer to 40 i believe so it's about half and half but that gives you great shots whenever you zoom in just touch focus and then use your exposure either up or down in this case i ended up turning the exposure down and it really gives you a nice color and really gets that coral popping now one thing i can't get around whenever i'm trying to record corals that are not on my sand bed is making sure that my phone is level with that coral meaning I don't want my phone pitched up or looking upwards because it really exposes the lens to your tank lights. Then you got to deal with attentic lighting and bleed through and just everything you don't want dealing with the cell phone. So uh, that's definitely a tip. You want to record corals, raise your camera up to the level and then get ready to shoot. Now, unfortunately, I'm not able to show you the exposure level as I'm recording. I tried my best, but I couldn't get screenshots of it good enough to see. But I'm going to kind of explain to you what it looks like. You know, once you zoom in, you touch focus on the coral, the exposure, I'm actually gonna roll it all the way up to the maximum level, just to give you an idea of how much it can affect your video. As you can tell, it's almost blinding. I'm gonna take it all the way down to the lower level and it's really, really dark and dim. But you know, if that's what you're looking for, you can pull it off. Now I'll take you right back to where it actually should be. And you can see just the detail I'm getting on just an iPhone. I mean, that's pretty damn good. No bleed through, lots of color. You can even see the color of the live rock. I mean, I say you can't get much better than that. So let's say you're done with close-ups and you want to get some interesting shots, you know, a little further away from your tank and you got to deal with this damn glare. Now, this is one of the hardest shots it took for me to figure out. I'm not going to lie to you, but uh, I figured out a way to actually make it look pretty decent without, you know, being completely glared out with no detail. Now, with only having three features on this phone, it's really kind of a reoccurring thing with how I shoot every one of my shots. You know, step one, make sure the phone's eye level with whatever you're recording. Step two, touch focus, which is what I just did on this shot. And then for that extra little bit of pop, you know, if you want to shadow behind your tank or to see a little more contrast inside of it from this far away, use your exposure, turn it down. Now, as I mentioned before, make sure you record more video than you're going to need, especially for situations like this. You want to add some movement. You want to zoom into your tank and then bam, you know, you get hit with glare. You know, I get hit with it all the time, but the difference is, you know, I know how to adjust, touch focus, drop down your exposure, get get a little more clarity and contrast. Now I'm zoomed in from halfway across the living room. This is pretty good for just a cell phone. And what this allows me to do is have some footage for when I zoom in and some footage from when I zoom out. So when it's time to edit and it's time to cut some things and crop some things, I can take 10 seconds from here, 10 seconds from there, put something together and then nothing will, you know, nothing will look like it even happened. So, you know, we're gonna get into that in the next video, give you guys a little nugget. Next episode, we're gonna finally dive into iMovie and my editing. 
I just had to acquire an older phone so I can kind of give you guys a tutorial. So um, that's going to cover all the shots. As you can tell, hey, it looks pretty good. Halfway across the living room, good contrast, and this is definitely a good clip to use. quick I didn't show you every angle I normally use but you know it's just the basics I mean I really don't want to guide you guys through everything because I really feel like you know you got to use your own creative you know ideas as far as different views and angles you want but uh, just to kind of recap well before we do let me go ahead and get these guys going for you throw some new life spectrum in there give y'all some action while I'm talking but um, really just kind of recap Make the best advice I can give you, try to keep your angles, if you're going to use them, at a tank level. You know, just like you would look at it with your eye, at eye level. You don't want to hit anything from this angle here. It's, it's, it's no good. Uh, try to cover, you know, all angles and sides of your tank. Not only to share with everyone, but for your own purposes. You know, it's all about, you know, sharing with everyone and also documenting the hobby. So, um, it's always good to be able to look back through every one of your videos and see similar angles. That way you can track progress and growth. I mean, that's something I always do. You're always going to see certain angles in my videos, and that's you know that's that's what I'm doing it for. So, um, other than that, you know, using the features on your phone, you know, the touch focus. You don't always have to focus on what you're really trying to record. Sometimes you got to focus somewhere else to help the things you know line up. Don't forget about the uh, exposure. That's something that's a huge thing that will save you uh, if you're getting certain angles and glare that you don't know how to deal with. And then the zoom, you know, that's not really something that's required, but when you're trying to get those effects and those, uh, you know, those different shots to try to keep everyone interested, hey, the zoom is a great thing to do. Uh, just try to remember to, you know, use your finger and go as steady as you can. So uh, other than that, you know, it's going to cover episode three. We're not really going to, like I said, I'm trying to keep these things rolling. So uh, episode four and five, I really feel like I'm, I may be to wrap the series up in five episodes. I have an idea of what those are going to be, but... Hey, I still love you guys' input, and I still love you, you know, questions and comments, so definitely drop it. Uh, the best question, the best comment that I feel is, you know, good for the series, I'm going to feature your channel, and I'm going to give you a shout-out next episode. So other than that, hope you guys enjoy the vid, enjoy the little action I provided for you guys. So definitely, uh, hey, like, comment, subscribe. You guys do what y'all do. Y'all be easy. Way, way, way. All the Three, three. Hey, I got a feeling that you might be. Do I turn you on? You can tell me if I'm wrong.